Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Friday Ramblings. Because it's Friday, and thus we must ramble. And we're going to have a little bit of fun today, we're going to do something a little slightly different because we're going to induct two movies that, well not technically sequels, are definitely thematically linked. Which is why they are often, these days, packed together as a two movie set for home release. That's right, we're discussing Tommy Boy and Black Sheep. These two films, as you saw on those covers, starred Chris Farley and David Spade coming out in the mid-90s as the two graduated from Saturday Night Live and looked to make it big in the world. Sadly, while these films were well-received, after a couple more films in Beverly Hills Ninja and Almost Heroes, Chris Farley would pass on, thus cutting his leading man comedic career short. David Spade has continued to perform, landing various TV and movie roles over the years. However, in my humble opinion, that's what this is all about after all, folks, Nothing was really as good since he left SNL as when he was playing against Chris Farley. Two had a natural chemistry as Farley's humor tended more towards the friendly idiot savant, and David Spade's cutting acerbic humor was the perfect foil for that. Both movies feature the formula of the two getting into hijinks as they try to do good for those they care about and also bond as friends even though as I said they are not technically direct sequels and they are playing different characters in each film. This of course means that the films are part of the classic buddy comedy genre as well as featuring a bit of adventure road trip style comedy due to both films providing different reasons for the characters to spend most of the film traveling. So, let's break it down one at a time. First came Tommy Boy in 1994. Yes, well, 1995. Yeah, they started filming it in 94, came out in 1995. Now, Tommy Boy also stars several other noted actors such as Bo Derek, Brian Dennehy, and Rob Lowe, along with cameo, well not cameo, but small part from Dan Aykroyd, which we'll touch on in just a second. The basic plot of Tommy Boy is that Chris Farley portrays Tommy Callahan III, who after seven years of college barely manages to graduate, thus prompting him to return to his hometown of Sandusky, Ohio, where his father, Big Tom Callahan, aka Thomas Callahan Jr., played by Brian Dennehy, runs the family auto parts plant Cal and business Callahan Auto, Big Tom gives Tommy Boy an executive job, figuring that, hey, you're part of the family, this is what we've been doing for generations, you're going to figure it out, kid. Big Tom also has some news in that he has recently fallen in love with a lovely woman, played by Bo Derek and has decided to marry her. Unfortunately, during the wedding reception, Big Tom suffers a fatal heart attack, leaving the company in shambles as there was no clear successor or clear plan of what to do next, along with massive bank loan due to their attempts to expand product, introducing new brake pads. Determined to save the family business and the town that he loves, Tommy Boy decides to take up his father's role, hitting the road visiting various auto part store owners in that 
particular part of America, you know, Ohio and the neighboring states, I guess. Would that be the Midwest? I think it's the Midwest. It's not the West, because that's down with Texas, Oklahoma, so. We're going to say Midwest, and feel free to correct me in the comments. But, yes, Tommy Boy hits the road, taking fellow employee, played by David Spade, Richard Hayden with him, who, being David Spade, is perpetually annoyed by Tommy's laziness and lack of common sense and book smarts. Along the way, Tommy meets up with a lady love of himself in Michelle Brock, played by Julie Warner. Who is, you know, a wonderfully fair-looking lass of the girl-next-door type who works in the distribution part of the auto plant, specifically being the one in charge of keeping all the orders straight and making sure the parts go to the right stores. She's a bit rough. She's a bit gruff. She's got a great heart. And before he goes on his road trip, the road trip, gotta make sure I put all the R's in there, Tommy begins crushing on her hard, and she seems to enjoy him herself. However, everything is not as simple as it seems, as Big Tom's now widowed wife is revealed to be a con artist who wants the company to fail because having inherited Big Tom's shares as his new widow, she wants to sell the company and get a bunch of money straight up all at once so she can move on and enjoy the nice life until she runs out of money and finds somebody else to con. She's joined in this by her husband, played by Rob Lowe, who is in this scam pretending to be her son from a previous marriage. Thus, before the major road trip section in Act 2, we get some fun with Tommy trying to bond with his new stepbrother. Along with, during the road trip section, a running gag where every time Rob Lowe's character of... God, I'm sorry folks, I'm horrible with names. Paul. I don't know why I couldn't remember that name. It's such a common name, but Paul attempting to sabotage the plant at various points to ensure what success Tommy may find on the road does not help the company, results in slapstick-style injury, including a very unpleasant encounter with a guard dog when Paul attempts to cause some problems at the plant after hours. Fortunately for everybody, it's all said and done, after a few failures, Tommy does find his inner salesman channeling that wonderful inherent charisma that both his father and grandfather used to build the business up to begin with. And it looks like everything's going to work out okay. But in classic fashion, Paul finally manages to pull off successful sabotage messing up all of Michelle's records behind her back at the last minute, which means that not only did some parts stores that were happy to order Callahan brake pads not get them, but others got the wrong amounts, thus prompting rage and promises to not continue to refund. Or, not refund, but reorder. So what's a couple of guys to do? Well... Tommy and Richard, they got to sit together. They got to pool their resources. They got to do what they do best. And they got to save the day through Dan Aykroyd's character. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Again, let me make sure I'm getting my name right. Ray Zielinski. Yeah, that, dude, that last name I had to see in print. <laughs> make sure I pronounce right. 
Who owns the largest parts store, Zelensky Autos, in this portion of the country? And is the man wanting to buy Callahan Auto? So, as we hit the finale of the movie, the question comes up. Can Tommy convince Zelensky not to buy the company? Can he expose the two con artists? and prevent them from owning the company and doing who knows what else with it? Can he save the economy of this small town, proving that he is a Callahan after all, and the town of Sandusky can trust their future in him? Will he win the heart of Michelle? Richard learned to lighten up. To figure all this out, folks, you're going to have to watch Tommy Boy. Hmm... No spoilers on the ending. So what makes this movie so great? Why is it so wonderful? I own a copy. Woohoo! Well, as I said before, David Spade and Chris Farley play off each other expertly, which makes a lot of sense since they were running together on SNL and had a lot of time to fill out each other's comedic chops, what they were best at, and develop a chemistry as comedic partners. David Spade taking the sarcastic, intelligent, straight man role while Chris Farley is the pratfall-loving clown of the duo. This is, in many ways, the best way to do two-man comedy as it harkens back to the earliest vaudeville and and black-and-white era of movies. People with people such as Abbott and Costello. But more importantly than that is that it has a wonderful supporting cast. Rob Lowe does a wonderful job as the handsome but cursed with bad luck con artist. Guy who just is a natural sleazeball and, you know, you just... Every time he talks, you, you, you feel just... Ugh. I feel like he's just got some something that he's laughing at that nobody else understands. Bo Derek, despite being a little bit older than when she wowed the world with her wonderful model looks in the 80s classic 10, continues to look quite wonderful for her age and play the femme fatale role wonderfully thus making it very believable that she could seduce a man like Big Tom to begin with. What's even more fun is when we get near the end of the movie and she goes head-to-head -head with sleazy salesman always looking out for his own ability to make more money, Ray Zielinski, and the two bounce off each other in a game of who can be the most I can outsmart you while also flirting heavily with each other. Because Dan Aykroyd is a comedic genius. Always been a big fan of his. And the Ray Zielinski character is a wonderful ability, wonderful character for his comedic abilities as he gets to laugh at his own cheesy jokes, feel arrogant, and ultimately, come off as somebody that knows how to play the game. Which for a veteran comic like Dan Aykroyd is 100% true. So where does that leave us? Well, we flash forward a year to Black Sheep. Now this time, instead of trying to help out a family business that is on the verge of bankruptcy... Chris Farley's lovable idiot is now attempting to help his brother win the governorship of Washington State from the long-standing incumbent, with David Spade playing a political aide who is encouraged to keep Mike Donnelly out of trouble. So his brother Al can campaign in peace. The pratfalls and accidental 
making things worse. It's cranked up even farther in black sheep, along with these accents being taken out of context by the incumbent governor's sleazy political aides, who are more than happy to make the Donnelly brothers look like wicked, evil people that you should not vote for. So who, who joins our wonderful comedic duo in this movie? Well, let's run down the list. As loving brother Al Donnelly, we have Tim Matheson, Christine Ebersol, who has a lot of experience herself, plays Governor Evelyn Tracy. We have supporting roles from Gary Busey, as well as two of Chris Farley's brothers, who have unnamed roles as security guards at a public event. So, how good is this movie? Well, personally, I do like Tommy Boy a little more because, you know, the whole idea of, hey, a corrupt politician's kind of cliche and at times hits a little too close to reality. As well as the fact that the political machinations of Governor Tracy tend to push some of the humor into a almost dark comedy territory, which while I have nothing against, is not the best context for Chris Farley to play in. Luckily, he does not have many scenes directly with the antagonists themselves and spends most of the movie campaigning out in the middle of nowhere, hopefully far away from cameras, along with David Spade's character, who is now called Steve Dodds. Probably my favorite highlight of the movie is them out in the cabin, which, due to earlier shenanigans from both characters, ends up getting sideswiped by a boulder, causing the cabin to go from this to this, and them trying to maintain their safety and sanity in a descending down a hill at a steep angle cabin allows Spade and Farley to truly embrace their roles as living cartoon characters. Leading to the perfect end line for any scene where after the refrigerator crashes into Chris Farley pinning him against one of the cabin walls, and David Spade's character asking him how he is, Farley's response of, I'm fine. Well, I think the chocolate pudding fell down my pants. Causing David Spade to look disgusted as he reminds Chris Farley's character, we didn't have any chocolate pudding. Yeah, that's one of those jokes that you think about for a couple seconds before you laugh. Gary Busey does show up as a military veteran who has a touch of PTSD and is a little paranoid about every single person around him. However, upon being befriended by Chris Farley's character Mike Donnelly, he proves instrumental in saving the day when it looks like the corrupt shenanigans of Governor Tracy is going to quite literally steal the election. So, should you see Black Sheep? Definitely. As I said, it's not quite the iconic classic as Tommy Boy, but that's like saying, well, you didn't get an A, but you got a B+. There's nothing wrong with a B+. You should always see a B plus film. The laughs are great. Farley and Spade's chemistry continues to shine through. If anything else, marathoning these two movies, 
biggest negative is being reminded that with Chris Farley's death soon after Tommy Boy and Black Sheep came out, we never got any more movies featuring these two. All we have is this and their SNL work. That's not enough. I'd have loved to have seen what a third go-round with these two would have done. You know, how much deeper could they have dug into that comedy well? You, know, you get people like... You know, God, like I said or Yeah. Uh, Abbott and Costello, they spend years working off each other. Three Stooges, they had a whole library of films. Now granted, there were a couple variants of the three, but still. It was not insane people that have good chemistry can only hit a home run once or twice. So, you know, it's one of those things where the movies greatly benefit from being seen, but you do have to also remember that they are being seen in the context of, look, this is stuff from the mid-90s. There's some jokes and situations that are a little outdated because you're looking at 25-odd years ago. You have to take it with a pinch of salt. You have to accept the fact you are seeing stuff from another generation. But... If you're like me, and you're old enough to remember those days, remember when these movies were in theaters, well, you'll have no problems knowing exactly why these films are so funny. Good news is, they're not hard to find. DVD sets like this can be found all over the place. I guarantee you, some streaming service or another has access to at least one of these films. So, go out and see them. Have a good time. Have some laughs. Remember Chris Farley fondly, as we all do. And, if you really can't get enough Chris Farley, I do recommend Beverly Hills Ninja. But we're not going to go too deep with that into this review. As Davis Pay doesn't show up for it, so we lose that thematic link. Nothing else? Psh, go see Black Sheep and watch Gary Busey do what Gary Busey does best, which is act just a little bit crazy. The guy has wonderful crazy eyes. How legit that is? Well, I don't know Gary personally, so I can't tell you. Hey, we all got time on our hands. We could all use some laughs. What else are you going to do for a couple hours after supper one night? Marathon more Mandalorian? Come on. There's only so many times you can watch those episodes in a, over and over again. Go with the classics. Channel some 90s. Come on, brah. Vintage SNL performers. It's not like I'm asking you to watch some Adam Sandler movies. Don't get me wrong. I like some Adam Sandler up to a point. But we all regretted watching Jack and Jill. If you do want more David Spade, though, I do recommend the show Just Shoot Me. Which is an excellent show where, once again, he got to play to his greatest strengths. So, with that, I'm going to leave y'all to go hunt down these comedy classics. Look at that. Yes, there's a scene in Tommy Boy with a deer. Not a real, real, real deer. It's real in the context of the movie, but as with all good Hollywood movies, no animals were harmed in the making of this film. Do you want to know why they're riding around with a deer? I bet you do. Come on. We all want to hear a crazy deer story. So, find a movie. I ain't telling you the deer story. You wanted the deer story. You got to watch the movie. Go find out about the deer. Do it. Meanwhile, I'm going to go chill out. I'm going to go veg out. But I'm going to be back in seven. Because I always am. 
Roulette Productions is here for you. We're keeping the entertainment positive, keeping the criticism constructive, and we're telling you, if Rob Lowe starts hanging around after dark and making weird, awkward comments, be a little careful, because he might just be a con artist. Later, taters.